Fellow Kenyans, welcome to our daily briefing on the status of coronavirus in our country. Yesterday, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta outlined a raft of new measures to contain the spread of coronavirus in the country. Such measures, among others, include the restriction of movement into and out of designated counties of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kwale, and Kilifi. It is important that we all, as Kenyans, adhere to these measures if to score significant gains against this monster and keep our country safe. Each and every one of us, and collectively as a country, we are now called to observe and watch over these measures. Let us not shy away to point out those in our midst who are not observing the measure and thereby putting the nation at risk. In line with the pronouncement by the President of the importance of wearing face masks, let me reiterate that it is critically necessary that every Kenyan wears a face mask whilst in public spaces. Everyone must make the effort to get them to protect themselves and others as we endeavor to provide them some where we can free of charge through our county governments and other partners. The measures announced so far call for drastic change in the way we live and the way we behave. It is not convenient, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, but we must not be afraid to embrace that which will save us from the danger lurking around us. We are at war with an enemy that is invisible. To fight this enemy more than ever before, we must remember to embrace simple and basic measures which have proved to be effective elsewhere and have been cited as best practice. These include washing our hands with soap and running water, as well as keeping social distancing. Let me say this. We will not hesitate to take even bolder measures in the coming days. The virus is already here with us and we cannot run away from it. It is around us, and we have embarked with it a chasing game. Should we allow this to happen, it will be very, very difficult for us to catch up with it. I want to take this opportunity to once again thank our healthcare workers in public, private, and mission hospitals who have worked tirelessly and sometimes under very difficult circumstances. We would not have been able to make the gains that we have had we not, and it not been for their dedication. Being our frontline heroes, I want to assure them that we will do everything possible to provide them with every facility that is necessary to enhance their performance. I also want to thank the Ministry of Transport, Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development and the County Government of Mombasa and indeed their Governor, Governor Joho, for the collaborative effort to provide disinfectant sprayers at Likoni Ferry. Such efforts contribute to the overall measures by the Ministry to fight the virus. I would like to encourage other counties to also come up with innovative ways to complete to complement 
the national government efforts. In the same vein, I also want to take the opportunity to recognize the efforts by the Ministry of Information, Communication, Technology, Innovation and Youth Affairs, together with the Ministry of Education, as well as the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, for introducing new education-oriented programs on television and radio to ensure that our children are productively engaged during this period. Further measures to enhance social distancing that we are going to institutes must now include even the following. Number one is that in sporting clubs, open air sporting clubs that have walking fields and so on, must strictly observe social distancing. We have seen people walking and yes, it is necessary that uh, people also stay healthy but we must observe social distancing. We have observed in some walking clubs where people are running next to each other and there is no better way of passing this virus than when they do so. So I would like to ask and I would like to reiterate that the managers of those walking clubs must restrict numbers in the club so that people do not um, people can be able to keep a uh, social distancing this measure we are going to observe for the next couple of days and may then take further measures if it become necessary you are aware it is uh, in it's, uh, it's not a secret that um, even in golf clubs golf clubs have also been abused. Consequently, all golf clubs must be closed with immediate effect. Golfers are free to walk, keeping social distances, but there will be no candies in any of those golf clubs. In this particular case, it is actually the reverse. It is the members who will eventually pass the virus to the caddies. And therefore, golf clubs will remain closed and the clubhouses will remain closed. Further, testing of all health workers, all health workers and medical staff, including those in private hospitals, rapid response teams, and all staff in all facilities holding quarantined persons must commence testing with immediate effect. I would like to report that we are lucky that we have started rapid testing in our facilities because we have got new reagents that can allow us to automatically test and not do the manual test that we have been doing. And for that reason, we will be able to uh, carry out those, those tests very quickly. But it is important that we start with our medical staff, even as we fight to, uh, to ask them that, um, that to be careful, we must also now ensure that we do not have medical staff who are also treating people when they have got the virus and therefore passing the virus to the to, uh, to citizens. So we must do that with immediate effect. I am pleased to report that over the last 24 hours, three of our patients, three patients who had been diagnosed as positive, have been released from our, our facilities having turned uh, negative. However, in the same 24 hours, we have tested 696 samples, out of which 14 people have tested positive for the disease. 12 of the 14 are Kenyans, while two are foreign nationals. Of the four cases, have the four, four cases have a recent history of travel from Tanzania, South Africa, UAE, and the United States. 
Four of them are from quarantine facilities, while 10 were picked by our surveillance teams. This now brings the total number of those who have tested positive for the disease in Kenya to 172. The 14 people that I mentioned have already been moved to isolation facilities and contact tracing has begun on the street. Let me just say this, that my friends, fellow Kenyans, let us brace ourselves for bad news. Let us be ready because all the measures that we are going to take, we will not stop the disease abductory. It is already here with us. There are two things that are fortunate for us. One is that the disease that uh, Kenyans are getting is very mild. We have been getting very mild infections and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Amos to say a little bit about that. As you can tell, the mortality rate for us has been quite low. But this is no reason for us to be relaxed at all. As we said earlier, we are praying and hoping for the best. But clearly, we must also prepare for the worst. And mentally, we must prepare ourselves to face an insurmountable situation. We must all work together. As I said last week, we are akin to a boat that is sailing towards a massive storm. And we must brace ourselves and be ready mentally. We will go, when you go to quarantine, it is very challenging. It is mentally straining. And we are having issues with people who are in quarantine facilities. It is not convenient at all. And my apologies to them for all the inconveniences that they are going through. But it is necessary. So, my fellow Kenyans, we must brace ourselves. Mentally be prepared to face a situation that we haven't faced before. But I also know another thing. I know that we were pulled through. I know that we are working together. I have seen effort from quarters that we would never expect. I have seen support from all over. And I have seen people helping each other. That is the way we are going to overcome it. We have now, out of the 14 people that I mentioned, for instance, seven are from Nairobi. Mombasa has two new ones. Machakos has one. Kisi has one. Kiambu has one. And Mandera has two cases. And the two reported cases from Mandera is a recent travel from Mombasa County. That explains why the decision by the president was taken, was taken yesterday to close some of the areas where we feel uh, people moving into and out of are causing further spread of the virus. With regard to contact tracing, a total of 1,928 and by now nearly 2,000 persons have been monitored. We have increased our capacity and our ability to monitor these persons and trace these people. Out of those, 1,415 have been discharged, having tested negative, and 513 are currently on follow-up. To date, we have managed to test nearly 5,000 people. I'm also pleased about the cooperation we are getting from members of the press, members of the media. We are happy that you continue to carry out education 
to carry out information and to keep our people informed about the measures and the necessity of those, uh, of those measures. So please, we ask that you continue to do so and we must be ready. This is not going to be a short term. It is not going to be a short term activity. We are not going to be dealing with this disease only for the next couple of weeks. Let us brace ourselves for the long term. And by a long term, I mean for the next couple of months. We know that people are in convenience, for instance, in traveling into and out of Nairobi. We are aware of the inconveniences that happened yesterday, but this is the only way. It is the only way that it can be done. And that is what other nations who have managed to contain uh, the disease or who are containing because it is not stopped anywhere but where they are containing it these are the measures that they are taking kwa hivyo ningetaka tu kusema kulingana na vile rais wale walisoma hotba ya rais na kusikia na kusikia hotba ya rais yeye alisema vile tutafanya akasema counties za Nairobi na tusamna na Nairobi ni Nairobi metropolitan area wale Kilifi na Mombasa huko ni lazima watu wakae ndani ya hizo county sakuna kutoka na pia vile vile wageni wale wangetaka kuja kutembea kutetebelea Nairobi tafadhalini mtangoja siku nyingine siku na moja kabla hamjaingia Nairobi watu wa Nairobi ndikuwa nimesema hapo awali ni lazima tu 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 tu, tu, tu kai Nairobi pia hakuna kutoka hapa kwa sababu tukianza kutembea huko ushaguna kuingineko tutapeleka hii virusi huko kwa hivyo kama mimi nasema kila siku tuji lazima tujikinge lazima tujitayarishe lazima tujue ya kwamba hii sio kitu inakuja ipite haraka haraka tukiangalia mbele tunaona dio tutafanya chochote tuhesabu dio watu wasije wakaumia ama kufa lakini ni lazima tujue ya kwamba kama vile nchi zingine kama vile kumefanyika nchi zingine ni lazima pia tuwe tayari hapa katika nchi yetu ya Kenya kwa sababu tunaona tunaona vile kunyafanyika kuingine na pia tunajua hata hapa pia kutafanyika kwa hivyo nataka ku kuasihi kila mtu kumsihi kila mtu tafadhalini ni tufanye, tufanye vile serikali inasema kufanye vile serikali inasema usijaribu usijaribu usione wewe kama ni mwelevu sana hii virusi haina mtu mwelevu hii virusi ukicheza nayo sio uelevu ni ujinga asanteni sana First and foremost, on the restriction on the 21 days, as I said earlier, the idea is to ensure that we do not um, we do not take the virus up country and to other counties because Nairobi has the highest has the high has the highest um, infection rate. So that's the idea, and also for those in other counties not to come into Nairobi and get infected while within. 
We have not stopped people from moving around within that area. So let's make it clear. We have not stopped anybody from moving around. We obviously encourage people to stay home. If at all possible, stay at home. Work at home. Stay at home. And as I said, it is only good practice. It's good practice because it is better for you to train yourself to stay home. Whatever you need to do, whatever measures you have to take to be able to stay in your house, please do. So whereas we have not closed movement of people internally, because we are trying, we are desperate to ensure that uh, people still can live as normally as is possible under these circumstances. And, and some commas can still continue going on. We must also address the fact that there is a limit to how much people can move and how much they can mix. So the restriction is, a, is obviously going to be accompanied by other measures. For example, in markets, we have announced and we keep telling people, when you are going to a market or a supermarket, you know the rules regarding supermarkets, they must, you must have a mask when you are going in there. In a supermarket that uh, if, we, if the health officers go to supermarkets where people don't have masks, then we have no choice but to close those supermarkets. We have said about hotels where we have got quarantined people and say those hotels must not admit anybody else. That once a hotel has a positive case, it must not admit any other person. And the persons who are in quarantine are in quarantine so that they don't move out. So yes, as I said, mass testing is the next step within those counties. I have said that we are starting with the all medical personnel so that in the event, so that we know, because it is clear, I mean, we are not immune. Medical people are not immune to these infections. And indeed, the probability of having infections within medical people is higher than the other areas. Therefore, we must start with our medical personnel so that we can remove or at least isolate those cases that have got uh, uh, the infection. I want to get better as quickly as possible because let's also agree that getting the virus is not a death sentence. Let's, let's also agree. It doesn't mean that because you have the virus you are going to die. No, it doesn't mean so, but it means that you can pass it quickly to other people who may themselves die because they might not be as strong as you are. So yes, we will we are, we are, we are do mass testing with the people, starting with the people, the contacts we have made, the people in quarantine, we are, we are, we are testing again, the people in, um, uh, in the medical field, the people who are workers in hotels, as I said earlier. So the way of uh, containing the, the measure is essentially to contain it. We have not currently closed the other counties. We are discouraging. I would like to say this. We are discouraging inter-county movement. The only area we are enforcing this is the areas that the president spoke about yesterday. We will enforce it. We have not started enforcing county-to-county -county movement but we are discouraging it. If you are staying at home, and if you are keeping social distancing, you have very little reason to start traveling from Laikipia to Samburu, or from Nyeri to Muranga, or from Kisumu to Siaya. You have no reason to. So what we are saying is for the moment, let's, dis let's, let's discourage any such movement, movement and hope that people uh, stick to doing that.
We have, we have told the hotels, and there's a circular that has gone from the DG. We have told the hotels, once you have got people uh, in your hotel who are positive, that's an infectious area. And what you are supposed to be charging going forward is your costs. You're not supposed to be making commercial, you know, you're not supposed to be taking commercial advantages on uh, people, especially who have already stayed with you for 14 days and have been forced to continue again for 14 to 14 days. In government facilities, the government is taking over, you know, the, the, the food and, and so on and so forth. But uh, we are discussing with the hotels and telling them that it cannot be business as usual. Therefore, we are encouraging them before it be, we, we go into uh, control, because if necessary, we will introduce control over how much they can charge. But we are hoping that they can make an amicable solution with those who are staying in those hotels. So um, to your point, Kaemba, what we are saying is let hotels know and let them be taught you cannot continue charging people, particularly when they are coming for the second round, the same amount of money. Sorry? You are paying 50,000? No, 2,000 per day. Yes, we know. We are, originally, when they came, there are those who are paying uh, 2,000 shillings. After a while, a lot of them have uh, a century not, not been paying. And we have uh, kicked them out. And uh, sometimes we've got to look at this thing on case by case basis. Sorry, are you making a speech or are you asking? Let me just say this, on the issue of the personal protective, the, the, the PPEs, we will not be needing, nobody is going to lack uh, PPEs in the next two weeks. I can tell you that. We have already got uh, consignments for theatre uh, PPEs. We have got, um, uh, this week alone, we have got an addition of about 10,000 kits this week. Um, by the end of the next seven days, we expect to roll out about 200,000, 200,000 kids. So that's why I'm telling you that I am confident about our ability to supply uh, personal protection. But I would also like to add something here, and it's good that I'm talking to a doctor, is a doctor who asked the question, that when you get this material, please use it. Please use it. Because we also have our fair share of individuals who are in the medical field who also are quite casual, you know, about the use of this gear. And uh, we have noticed it in certain areas. Obviously, we keep on telling them, you know, they know better. Doctors know better about, and medical personnel know better about the danger that one exposes themselves. So we are saying, yes, we'll ensure that everybody is properly catered as we speak 
Nobody is going anywhere where they are exposed without protective gear. Let me say that. Nobody is going in exposed areas without protection. But what we want to make sure is that it is not just a question of uh, the, the few who are going to exposed areas. It is everybody. Everybody in the medical uh, field uh, uses them. Uh, as I said, we are testing even receptionists within hospitals because we don't know. We are testing even cooks within hospitals. Anybody involved and going so that we can isolate that and then going forward, everybody would have the gear to make sure that we have, um, we have contained any spreads in, that, um, in those uh, facilities. I want to ask uh, Dr. Amoth to respond to the other question. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, let me just start by making a remark regarding the severity of the illness, as asked by Dr. Masi Korin. Uh, as of now, we have one person in critical care unit under ventilation. And this person is doing well. In fact, we have been in uh, contact with the doctors who are taking care of him. And we are looking at a possibility of one or two days he'll be out of the ventilator. Uh, in our previous announcement, there were two people under ventilatory support. The other one came out of the ventilator. He's up and about. The other persons who are admitted in various hospitals from Nairobi all the way to Mombasa Avenue, Aga Khan, are all doing well. So majority of our cases are still very mild cases. Of course, if you look at the age distribution, the youngest has been two years old. The oldest is 74 years old. A male to female ratio of about 56, 44. So more men and uh, fewer uh, women. And of course, we know the reason why we have that male-female distribution. Our case fatality rate has been about 2 to 3%, which compares very, very favorably with other countries. Uh, in the early stages of the infection, in which case you are dealing with smaller numbers, and therefore the crude death rate or the case fatality rate tends to be low. Uh, in terms of uh, quarantine, I, let me just also add that though this is a painful measure for those whose duration of quarantine has been extended, it is a painful measure that we have to take but it is for the good of the Kenyan people. I also want to applaud those who actually are both the covenant of respecting the quarantine instructions, those who came like from hotels like um, our trademark in, in, in Gigiri, uh, Hill Park Hotel, where there was no single case that tested positive. And as of today, we have started releasing those people home. We want to assure you again, especially those who are in quarantine, to ensure that you follow the social distancing rules, the infection prevention control measures, the hand washing, and very soon we are going to again check on you after the 10th day to see if you are negative. Working together with the county governments, we shall be able to release you to go home and continue with self-quarantine in conjunction with the county health management teams and uh, follow up from the team at the national level. Thank you. Thank you. That must have escaped my mind. The healthcare workers, in fact, as of today, following our meeting today with the Azeri and PS, we have identified suitable accommodation at uh, one, one of the hotels, it's Adas Hotel, just next to Nairobi Hospital, for the healthcare workers. And the team at the Kenya Medical Practitioners Dentist Council, chaired by Dr. Evan Jenga, are working extra hard to be able to get us extra facilities so that healthcare workers who get into contact with these cases don't go home, but go to a specific place and therefore prevent gross contamination with members of the family and the public as they move home. In terms of the distribution of the PPEs, of course, it is on case-by-case -case basis. The demand so far, in terms of the numbers we have, Nairobi will take a bigger chunk of the PPEs because we have higher numbers in Nairobi. 
but we'll also be able to deploy a significant number of PPEs to Kwale, Kilifi, Mombasa, Nakuru, where we also have active cases, and any other place where we think based on a risk matrix that we have developed. Thank you.